welcome, welcome back. Oh, I like it. We're, we're having a good time, and it's a full house here on a Sunday afternoon. So welcome to this amazing culinary stage at Feast It Forward for the Napa Valley Film Festival. I'm Amanda Haas, a Whole Foods Market Ambassador slash professional talker this weekend, but so happy to have you here. And we have had so many incredible demos, but I'm particularly excited about this one and to introduce you to the filmmakers before we start. We have Lynn Hamrick, who was the director and writer, right, Lynn? I think I'm getting this right. And Gail Yasunaga, uh, who edited the film, and we would love to show a trailer before we get started with the cooking. Let's take a look over here. People should know Kiro and how great he is and his philosophies. Just it comes up with it becomes a higher art form. Mike is working, testing. One, two, three. It's been over 15 years now that I'd been making a documentary about Master Chef Hiroji Obayashi. <laughs> My mom jokes, she was like, are you serious? We have to move to America. He's uh, like a typical husband. My wife told me, so, you know, I'm very nice, nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like my father. Like my brother. That's better. Wait. Heroes and Gourmet was the go-to Japanese restaurant for me. He was doing things that, that wasn't happening at the time. Every day it was something different. The open kitchen. Farm to table. He's an artist. An artist? I guess they call it California or fusion. It's much stronger, it has more impact. Or more, yeah. Oh, that's just blue. And it was like, wow. From the artist. <laughs> yeah, he's doing it. The restaurant grew and grew in popularity. We would eat here, I don't know how many times a week. They know when I walk in what I want. It was not unusual to see the Hollywood types uh, sitting in a corner. Foodies, food critics, reviewers, and chefs all became regulars. You know, when you see something really good and simple, and you go, that's what's really good. People started calling him to do a restaurant consultation. Las Vegas, Newport Beach, a bunch of other ones. Maybe it was taking its toll. In the midnight, I felt something. That's where I get emotional. <laughs> yeah. Where I'm going to? What is this like? Have any of you had a chance to see the film yet? A couple, oh wow, a handful of people, that's terrific. Well, for those of you who haven't, we're so happy to have you here and to help bring some inspiration to life around the food. Chef Curtis DeFede from right here in town. He's the executive chef of, can I say it right? Mimi Nashi and owner. Welcome. Hi, Hi Curtis, how are you? Hello everyone. So happy to have you here today. And I, I can't believe that this is my job, that this is what I get to do, is to work with all of you. And we also have Michelle, the assistant winemaker from Liner Family Winery, joining us to pair wines with your incredible food. Oh, thank you. So thank you for coming and taking a few minutes out of your life at the restaurant as well, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so I really love, and we'll learn more about the story from the film as well through Lynn and Gail, but what are you making today? Uh, so today we're going to be making Quanaut River steelhead trout okay. uh, that has been poached in dashi, a little bit of ginger, chanterelle mushroom shiitakes. 
Wow. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And were any of you here yesterday for the Dashi film? Did you say, yeah, you got to hear a little bit about it as well. I'm so, so bummed I missed the, I the Dashi film yesterday. Uh, uh, pretty crazy, but I love that you're going to start with this. So can you share with us kind of how you walk through the steps yeah, of this so, recipe? Um, something that we're going to start off first is uh, by making the Dashi. And what I like to start off with is uh, we use purified water at the restaurant in order to make our Dashi. Um, in Japanese cooking, water is very, very important, whether it comes to cooking or sake making. Um, so we're using purified water for this. I want and you to know you're passing the test, by the way, of the pure Japanese uh -huh. chef yesterday talking Good. about water. Everything's right so far, Curtis. I'm glad we're on the same doing. page with that then. <laughs> doing something right, yeah, right? Yeah, you are, right? Uh, thank you. Right. Um, so we have the water, and I'm just going to bring this up to... Uh, where I start to see bubbles at the bottom of the pot, so it kind of looks like champagne. And then we're going to add something called kombu. Um, this particular kombu is actually coming from Hokkaido, which is the northernmost island in Japan. Um, it has the coldest water, so it can kind of grow the largest kombu. So um, a leaf like this would be almost like about half the size right. of this table. We had some yesterday yeah. from that exact From, from Hokkaido? Of course. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so again, check, check. So let me just turn Amazing. this on real quick. I think that your story is so interesting, too, because if you've been to a no tree, he was the chef at a no tree before going and doing other things. He's a master olive oil. Well, tell me again. What I'm a master title? of olive oil. Master of olive oil. Yeah. Only 25 of them yeah. in the world. Only 25 in the world. And here you are doing oh, this incredibly, incredible Japanese-inspired Thank cooking. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to just wait till this comes up to a simmer. Okay. Um, and then we'll drop in the kombu. And then we have something here called katsuboshi. So this is uh, shaved bonito flakes. And um, bonito is a skipjack or it's a uh, part of the jack family. So it is in the tuna family. Um, it doesn't get too large. A large fish would be a little bit larger than this cutting board right here. Um, and what they do is they will fillet it. Um, they steam it and then salt it and dry it and then smoke it. And then um, it is shaved into these little tiny, tiny flakes. paper wafer pieces of fish. Um, so this kind of imparts some smokiness and a lot of savoriness with the umami in, in order to get the, the flavor that we want out of something called dashi. And so at the end of the day, this is what we'll, we'll, we'll get and we'll use this for, for poaching for the steelhead trout. I think the thing that's so interesting about the dashi is they were saying it's truly three ingredients. But the amount mm -hmm. of time and love that go into this, this ages for two to three years after being sun dried. And Correct. this yeah. gets smoked for 30 days before they even consider doing anything with Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. So you take these perfect ingredients that have been given so much love to create this amazing foundation for your cooking. Yeah. 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 And so. Um, that's uh, uh, we use it uh, for all of our ramen broths and for basically it's it's something that we always have on hand at the restaurant. You have a question? Oh, that's I a great have, question. You know what? I haven't seen anyone do that yet. You know, and that that would I'm be gonna find out for you. <laughs> I'll yeah, find you, out where you can get it. Yeah, um, yeah. But it is really easy to make. Yeah. Um, you can get the ingredients there, I think. And that, you know, Chef was saying yesterday, too, like, he uses it so quickly or might freeze it for a couple of days. Yeah. But do you tend to make it and you know, use it right honestly, away? Honestly, this, the, for, for my personal, I don't know what the, uh, the chef said yesterday, mm -hmm. um, but it goes sour pretty quickly. Oh, um, okay. And not, I, I shouldn't say sour. Maybe that's not the right word. Well, but but uh, it dissipates. Uh, the flavor goes away very quickly. Got it. Um, because it is uh, such a delicate flavor right. that we, we try and make it about every two days at the restaurant. Um, oh, we wow. go through about 10 gallons every two days Do at the restaurant. Really? So, Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Okay. So it's really fun to see you make that. So and we've, we're getting our little, uh, champagne bubbles at the top of the, our water and I'm just going to kind of throw break it this in. in half and throw it in. Okay. How and long then, do you need to let it steep? So we like to do it for 20 minutes, the kombu at the restaurant. Okay. And then we add the katsuboshi and do it for another 20 minutes. So it, it takes about an hour to make with boiling time and straining and everything like it's that. It's like stock, but faster. But faster, yeah, right. exactly. And you use it in the same ways? We use it in the same way. Um, it's just a great base stock because it does have the smokiness from the katsuboshi. Right. Um, so that way it, it's able to, like have more depth of flavor other than just using water or like a fish stock or something Got like that. Got it. Okay. It's so. worth it. It's definitely worth yeah. it. 
So this is going to be kind of the foundation. So I'm going to yeah, just kind of let that sit. All right. We'll do a little TV magic here, and I'm going to go ahead and start getting on. Don't to you the, love? Uh, yeah. I love the TV magic. And while you're starting the TV magic, and we get to speed it all up, Lynn, see, we'll, I would, we'll speed it up a little oh, bit. Yeah. I'm so happy to see that you're already getting the taste of the food as well to go with the wine. But I'm wondering if you can just share with us this this film took you you spent 15 years working on this. Is that right? I didn't spend 15 consecutive Solid years. <laughs> years. <laughs> However, day. we followed the chef over a 15-year span. That is and remarkable. And I would say Gail and I were working on editing the film because we had a lot of verite footage for the last three years. That's unreal. And I love the story, actually, the two of them. We were just talking before we started. They went to film school together at UCLA. And we won't say how many years ago. It doesn't no, really matter. You. But the fact that they had More the opportunity. More than 15. <laughs> More than 15. To have the opportunity to come together on this film is amazing. What did you learn from the chef after observing this for so long? What were the big lessons that you took away? Well, I think. Hero's philosophy, as he describes it himself in the film, is that food is not just cooking, food is heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think he put his own chi, as it were, his own mm -hmm. love into the food, mm -hmm. and by choosing the ingredients at the farmer's market right. and how he prepared it, and much like this attention, purified water, you know, it's, it's detail. And, um, and that that came through. Right, it does come through And when he couldn't do that any longer, he sold the restaurant. He's done. Because he had some health issues and stuff that you see come up in the film. Right. But when he couldn't give that, he wouldn't. 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. He walked exactly. away. That's really, really an amazing story to tell. And I think that as I'm learning more about Curtis as well and understanding that you took on this business, he's the owner of the restaurant as well, and it's received so many wonderful accolades, but you have to have that much passion for what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm there almost seven days a week sometimes. Are you really? Um, but it's, it's, it's my life, and it's what I love doing. And I'm lucky because my wife is the <laughs> beverage director. Uh, so, say you're very yeah. <laughs> smart, found someone who understands yeah. and that they can you know, feed yeah. off each other that way. So we're able to see each other and, and uh, spend time together, so it's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. I love yeah. it. Okay, so while I turn my back, you've taken mm -hmm. your gorgeous knife and you did ah. the mushroom prep here. Yeah, so... Uh, so what are you making? What's so this is going to be... Uh, I'm just going to saute some shiitake mushrooms and chanterelle mushrooms oh, together. Oh, gorgeous. Um, okay. Got a pan ready to go here. Okay. And we're going to get some olive oil in there. Okay. Extra and virgin, I'm, does it matter? Um... Preferably, I actually like to cook with just uh, uh, virgin, not extra virgin. Because you're burning away you're all burning the great qualities. You're burning away the qualities. oil and you know, all that great quality. I only finish with extra virgin. So. Right. It's a great rule of thumb, I think, too, when people yeah. are trying to select ingredients based on price as well. Like, don't waste it if you're going to get it really hot. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm also curious how you wound up making this kind of food when he's Italian <laughs> and had a very different background in culinary before this restaurant. Uh, so I was fortunate enough, uh, we, uh, when we, I was at Anotra, we closed down about uh, two weeks every year in January. So um, I went to Japan for my first time oh, in uh, wow. 2012 and absolutely fell in love with the, the cuisine. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys know the restaurant Terra uh, up in San Lina. I worked so there delicious. for two and a half years as well uh, under Chef Hero. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was able to you know, just fall in love with the culture and the cuisine. Right. And I uh, had an amazing experience uh, for two weeks in, in Tokyo and Kyoto and, wow. and uh, Niigata. And um, I've been back several times since then. So uh, when I came back, I just felt that Napa needed something that was like a little bit more casual and not sushi. Right. And so I wanted to open up Mimi Nashi, and we're a Japanese pub in downtown Napa. Incredible. So, yeah. Which, and not just that, but I've heard about the soft serve ice cream situation that you have as well. You yeah. go ring the bell, and there's a door. Yes, yeah, so we have a walk up ice cream window. <laughs> when, so, Japanese cuisine's not known for their extravagant. Uh, extravagant desserts right and so uh, it's a lot of mochi and things like that and right. so I wanted to do something that you know was very popular in Japan and it's called Japanese soft cream <laughs> and it's a little bit of a higher fat content than normal uh, ice cream um, but it is soft serve ice cream and we have four flavors all the time and we have it rotating throughout the week uh, right now we have s'mores 
Oh. Rancho Gordo Mexican chocolate, Silverado Trail strawberry, and we have a sorbet that we're doing today. Oh, wow. Uh, it's Margarita Pog. And that's uh, Margarita Pog. Pog My yeah. kids would freak out. <laughs> Pog is amazing. Yeah. So um, that's soft serve as well? That is soft serve as well, yeah. Wow. So I imagine people are coming to you just for that, too. Yes. When you want a little taste of things. Yeah. Incredible. So what are we doing here? You're just going to saute So I'll just uh, the saute these mushrooms. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to deglaze with some uh, sake. I um, love this. Yeah, so we have a sake that's coming from uh, Akita Prefecture, which is the northern part of Japan, which is about three hours north of uh, Tokyo. Okay. Um, and it's a Junmai Daiginjo. Okay. And the way that sake is selected is uh, it comes down to the rice polish. Okay. So this is up to 50% where the rice is polished. And that really affects the flavor as well, uh, or the you're intensity get, of you're it? You're going to get it in, uh, yeah, because once again, it comes down to water. Uh -huh. So you're going to get more of the pure rice flavor. Okay. So the more that the germ is polished away from the rice, okay. you're going to have a pure flavor with the sake. I don't know if you noticed, I just finished my wine early so I could try it. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> you're uh, deglazing with that. We need to there know we what go. we're talking and it's, about. I mean, Junmai Daiginjo as well is the highest polish, so it is the highest quality for sake okay. uh, typically. Okay. So it's, you know, you, you cook with what you drink with. So, Ex yeah, please. I, yes, I'm very happy <laughs> to do that. And for all of you, I'm curious which wine you paired with this today, Michelle. You can grab the mic. Um, uh, we have our 2017 Viognier Ooh. wine. So. Which was delicious and an interesting combination with the food. What do you like about that pairing? Um, well, I love how Viognier can be rich and full-bodied, right. but still be kind of fresh and floral and fruity. And so I think that really pairs well with the, the salmon and the, and the mushrooms. Um, so it, it, it brings everything out, but doesn't overpower it. doesn't anything. compete with it. Yeah, absolutely. And you like the play of it against the mushrooms. Yeah. I think mushrooms are, we've been talking about these ingredients that are hard to pair with wines. Mm -hmm. or strong. We started the festival off with beets on Thursday morning and the uh, wine spectator editor was like, thanks. That's really a fun one to start with, right? And then we did Brussels sprouts yesterday, but we found these beautiful pairings. And so I think it's really, it's nice to have you here to share those with you. But Viognier will hold up, okay, against your gorgeous food. So then I'm going to uh, put something in here called mirin. This yeah. is uh, fortified sake, so they just add sugar to it. More so they, sugar, uh, okay. In order to uh, do it. And uh, this is called aji mirin, which... Um, which I see at Whole Foods. Basically, yeah. It's Super approachable, this, easy to find. Yeah, really easy to find. Okay. Um, I'm going to put about three tablespoons in there with the uh, sake, and we're going to cook that down. So that's going to really give it a nice balance. Yeah. And then um, I also put some lemon slices in here for a little bit of flavor to perfume the, the stock. And then we have some grated ginger um, that I'm just going to put a nice little dollop in as well. I'm watching. Would lemon be something typical in Japanese cooking to use as an acid, or is that a California um, twist no, I mean, for it, you? No, I mean, it would definitely be a California twist for me, but mm -hmm. they do use lemon. Um, you commonly see yuzu or lime Love yuzu. as well um, right. in Japanese cuisine. Okay. Um, but we're so lucky to have this amazing citrus all over mm -hmm. California. So I, I try it. My grandmother, um, who lives up in St. Lena, she has these huge uh, grapefruit trees that oh, wow. are really, they've got to be over 80 years old. And Incredible. so she brings grapefruit to the restaurant all the time. Oh, how lucky uh, are you? Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. So It uh, helps that you grew up here, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you got grandma down the street. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah, I'm still just trying to understand his path from where you started to where you <laughs> are now because really, I, I don't know if people would know that this wasn't your first love, this type of cooking. And so no, your yeah. restaurant has become so popular. I grew up uh, doing all Italian food. So a right. um, little changed. A yeah. little changed. <laughs> right? Completely so different continent. So. Completely different <laughs> continent. But that's the best part about food. And you can pull in different traditions. So where do you get, where do you source the fish? Um, so we're very lucky in Northern California here. Right. We use a, a seafood company called um, Monterey Fish. Oh, they're um, wonderful. Based out of San Francisco. Right. Um, they're on the same dock as Osprey Seafood. Uh -huh. um, so we do use Osprey as well, who, which is here in Napa for right. anyone who else is local. Um, and we're getting steelhead from the Quinault River up in uh, Washington. Amazing. So. Um, and are you always pulling? Do you try to stay local for those things or in America? Or we will you do, get, yeah. yeah. Um, on on, on the, our sashimi list, we try and do um, as local as we possibly can. That's cool. Um, the furthest we kind of go away is a little bit on the East Coast and then some in Hawaii. Got it. 
it. So. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what you're going to do yeah. with this because the fish so, looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put these right in here like okay. that. Okay. All right. Um, and it's not going to stick to the pan because we have um, the, the mushrooms and the uh, lemon on the bottom there. Sounds good. And then good. I'm going to go ahead and put my dashi right on top. Your TV dashi. My TV dashi <laughs> that was ready for us to go. So you're kind of poaching. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll be poaching this fish just like this. What I love too, and we mentioned this as we were chatting, is that I think a lot of people think about Japanese cuisine, and the first thing we do is we go to sushi, right? And you were saying in the restaurant too that sushi was part of it, but by no means the entire entire equation. There's so many other types of food to enjoy. Right. Yeah. So um, same in your world, you're showing people yeah, the other ways. That's to exactly eat. what I wanted with the restaurant is to show that there's other types of things other than sushi in Japanese cuisine, um, and so that. And, uh, to me means izakaya dining, which is Japanese right. pub. Right. So, I was going to say, when you put the word yeah. pub with it, or you say mm -hmm. that in English, it's like, what, does it, what is that food? But yeah. this is traditional. Or what are the other things on your menu that you um, So we have uh, ramen uh -huh. uh, that we do. Uh, we have something called okonomiyaki, which is a Japanese pancake Ooh, uh, no. that we offer on our teppanyaki grill. I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we also have a robatayaki, which uh, has a ton of little chicken parts and stuff that we do. So uh, we, we serve all different parts of the chicken on a rabata yaki, and then we do grilled fish items. Uh, we're doing the uh, collars of the steelhead trout that we got in, and wow. hamachi collars and, and things like that. So, Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. And then lots of sake to drink with it. And lots different of sake, wines yeah. as well. Or um, how did you build the alcohol program? Yeah, we, uh, we, we have a, a great bar program as well. That's something uh, that we wanted to have at Mimi Nashi. A great uh, Japanese whiskey program. And then uh, my wife uh, runs the sake program. She's also a master of sake. Oh, my God. So, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit of talent in their house. <laughs> I'd like to come for dinner. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so as this is going, how long will this poach, Curtis? So um, if the steelhead is about uh, two and a half inches in size, which is a, a average size for a steelhead coming from the Colnott River, mm -hmm. um, you're going to probably want to poach on each side. Um, I've, I've poached, put the liquid about halfway up to the the salmon, and it's at a very, very gentle simmer. Right. Uh, we're going to poach probably about four minutes on each side, and then it'll be a, a perfect, like, medium rare plus, or, like, almost medium. Right, which is, if I'm going to do steelhead or salmon, I'm, I'm okay with it like that. I don't need yeah. to have it rare or medium rare. I like yeah. it cooked through a little bit uh, more. Yeah. I like so. to use the word custardy. Custardy. Little, like, centered. It's just nice and soft in the middle. It's so, like a yeah. great visual cue, too, yeah. when you're cooking. I also like that you're doing this, but you're not having to use any fancy cookware to poach. And I think sometimes people hear about techniques and they think you're doing something crazy, but you're just literally yeah. doing this in a saucepan. Me, I, whatever. I'd pan. like to do everything in one pan. Do preferably. you really? Is, uh, um, cooking the mushrooms in the bottom of the pan creates a nice flavor of mushrooms, and so mm -hmm. that's going to perfume the rest of the uh, poaching liquid. Right. Um, we could even reduce some of the liquid down and turn that into more of a sauce as opposed to like a soup. That was so. going to be my next question. Does it get yeah. reduced? Um, yeah. We're not going to reduce it too much because okay. I want it nice and light. Mm -hmm. um, but you can kind of see, I don't know, let me move this for you guys. Sure. I apologize, but you can kind of see that the... Uh, Salmon's turning a little bit opaque, and uh, it's starting to squeeze out the, uh, through its pores these little tiny bits of um, uh, fat, and that's what we all love in, in steelhead and trout. And so that's when uh, we can kind of tell it's time to flip over. Got it. So We have a couple tools over there. You can shop our pseudo kitchen back here. Let me see. Are you looking for tongs? Sure. <laughs> Maybe I have them. I don't. That's fine. I can use a spoon right here. He's a professional. Uh, He'll yeah. figure it out, right? That'll work. That'll definitely work. Oh, and that's gorgeous. Okay. So this it's will just go, a fragrant. Yeah. Well, this will go for another three minutes. Wow. And then uh, we'll finish with a, a little bit of the soy sauce. I know that... Uh, okay. Don't worry about me. All right. So <laughs> we'll finish I, with a little I, bit of the I'm soy sauce. I'm free, but I think the depth of the soy adds so yeah. much. And then we're going to add a little bit of uh, rice wine vinegar as well. Um, I like to balance things with uh, salty, sweet, fat. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the acid's going to help out with that because we did uh, add some of the mirin into that. So it is going to be a little bit on the sweeter side. Right. So we want to balance that with some uh, rice wine vinegar. I think that's one of the things, too, is you, we've had so many incredible people here doing so many different types of cuisine, and you find these common threads, and people are always trying to balance the sweet, the salty, the acid with the fat and the crunch mm -hmm. and the textures. And so to see you bring it to life in a different way is really, really fun. Okay, so, so um, edamame. Yeah, we also have some edamame beans. Okay. Um, and now is a good time to kind of put this in. 
just because they've already been steamed and blanched. And if you just get uh, any frozen edamame and pick them yourself, they're all be uh, cooked, ready to ready go. Ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right. So are you just trying to heat them in this dish? You're not trying to cook them any more than they already have yeah, been? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I love the color it adds to it. How, did everybody get to try it? And I see a question over here, too. Oh, great question. Oh, that's a, yeah, so we were talking, <laughs> we were talking about talking this earlier. Um, I think tamari is a great alternative to soy sauce. Um, but what I do want to say is that tamari doesn't mean that it's 100% soy. Um, there's several versions of tamari out there. There's actually the original tamari. Tamari is actually older sauce than soy sauce is. And the original tamari is 100% wheat. Um, so be very, very careful. There are some 100% uh, wheat tamaris out there. <laughs> um, so if yeah, anyone's gluten-free or anything like that, make sure that you're checking with the restaurant. So um, at Mimi Nashi, we offer 100% uh, gluten-free tamari, and then we also have soy sauce. That's amazing. Yeah. And I, I, I was sharing yesterday, I kind of get afraid to go out to eat knowing I can't have it because you don't want to insult the people who have cooked your meal, and it's kind of embarrassing to say, I'm gluten-free. People think you're on a special diet. And so, but what's amazing is that restaurants have become so sensitive to it and thoughtful about it. So I had yeah. no idea. We, we love to be accommodating restaurant. with it. And right. so, um, you know, we can do almost all of our menu gluten-free. Wow. Um, and we actually have a lot of vegans that come into the restaurant as well. That's and incredible. we have a, a very large vegetable section on oh, our, so nice. our menu so that we can accommodate to them. And I think he's teaching me you just have to read labels, right? And I'm really used to shopping. Yeah. I do. Sh <laughs> the joke is I shop at Whole Foods like 12 times a week. I have forever. But I'm really used to reading labels. And that's one of the reasons I like it. It's so clearly marked. And so when you're trying to recreate these things at home, I, of course, would love to use whatever soy you're using. But they're wonderful alternatives out there if you study up. Yeah. Does anybody else have questions as we're cooking and about the film, the food, or the wine? Everyone looks very settled into a wine country weekend. Day four of this. <laughs> They're very relaxed. Very relaxed, right? Uh, do, when did you, I didn't even get to ask beforehand, when has the film been shown here? Is, has it shown a couple times? Yes, we had a screening Thursday morning at 10 a.m., and we had a screening last night that was to capacity um, oh, right amazing. before the awards ceremony at the Archer. That's incredible. And did you mention that this already won a very amazing award? I didn't award? mention that. No, <laughs> you may. <laughs> but the film has just been so well received. And that was at which festival, did you say, uh, well, Lynn? It was an odd experience because we had the world premiere at the Santa Fe Film Festival, and they had it was they had a jury voting on films prior. Right. So even before we screened the film, the head of the festival came up to me and said, "You know, you've won Best Documentary in New Mexico." And and oh I looked at him gosh. and I said, "No, no. That, you know, like I'm I'm arguing with him. You're like finding out haven't. on the spot that yeah. you won. But you know, so that was I I felt wow, we've hit the pinnacle. We just haven't even <laughs> shown the film yet. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. I'm really grateful you were able to show it here, especially with all of us loving food and wine and tradition around the table so much. Well, it's a great festival, and everybody has been just so receptive, and it's just, what an atmosphere. I mean, it's right? wonderful. Yeah. Have many of you been to this festival before? Raise your hand if you're a repeat. Yeah. I mean, this is my first year participating, and it's just blown me away. So, and when you have local talent like this, too, it doesn't hurt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, Can I ask a you. question? Yes, I um, love that. And yes, <laughs> it's great here. <laughs> How do you become an olive oil master? I would like to know uh, yeah. that. And one of so, 25 in the world? Yes, yeah, so. And one uh, of five in North America. No big deal. Uh, it, it all started with writing an essay in order to get in, uh, accepted into the National Organization of Olive Oil Tasters. Right. Uh, Which is a serious. It's serious business. Yeah, it's pretty serious. Um, we had it. Uh, there's a there's a test, a uh, smelling test that you have to have. Oh yeah, please. Yes, I thought the salmon with the broth was perfect. With salmon, it's to the timing, you know. Otherwise, it's not the same. You loved it. You it's liked very it with the salmon. Important by the second. God, oh, thank, thank you, you so much. I'm thank so you. glad I you liked it. it. I said I think he knows what he's Does doing. Does it go well with the you? wine? Well, well, with the, uh, did, did you the like wine it with the wine paired with it very well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, do I not? No, I'm not that well with wine. So <laughs> okay. I can't, uh, you know, can't compliment the wine. 
but so alone you were happy with it. The salmon was good. But the oh, salmon. Yes. Thank you so much. That's so great. Such a compliment. Much appreciated. Yeah. So, okay, back to how you became. Um, yeah, so there's a test. Uh, we, there's They put 48 different olive oils in front of you, and uh -huh. you have to uh, designate whether one, which one's the most rancid to the least rancid, because that's how you figure out uh, wow. the, the flavor of olive oil is rancidity based upon pre uh, how it's pressed. Oh my gosh. Um, and you can only miss one out of the 48. Uh, I'd yeah. fail miserably. Uh, so the, yeah, the, I was the last person to pass. Uh, and it's been three years since You're I've taken the You're the last test. person to pass. Yeah. <laughs> so every three years, maybe if we're lucky, we get another one. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. That's so, well, they do, it, they do the test every year, so yeah. And no one has passed no one's since passed, you. Uh, yeah, that's why there's only 25 <laughs> of us in the world. Yeah, it's there, like there's wine five of tasting. us in North America. Yeah, it's like wine tasting, oh so yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's, <laughs> I can see why you're using olive oil yeah. as you're cooking your uh, Japanese cuisine yeah. as well. That is incredible. So yeah, every year this time we get a bunch of olive oils in at the house and uh, I'm able to designate whether an olive oil can be virgin or extra virgin for competition. Unreal. Yeah. Is this part of the COOC Correct. as well? Okay, yes. we had to yeah. go through this yes. train, well, like this much <laughs> training. And again, I failed miserably. I'm like, I like this one, I don't like this one. No, nothing in between. Yeah. But that's remarkable to have that oh, skill. Thank you. It's like wine tasting and being able to identify varietals. We did a tasting yesterday where they were blind tasting. And I'm like, the guy's going through his head saying, okay, not this country, not that country, not this region. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom. And you could do the same thing with us for olive oil. Oh. Yeah, wow. thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so are you going to plate this dish Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and um, we're just going to season the broth lightly with a little bit of soy. Okay. Um, probably like a tablespoon. I don't like to use too much just because we just need a little bit in there to give it some umami. Right, and a little more depth. And then a little bit more with the rice wine vinegar. Okay. So you get more of that acid hit at the end and you're not cooking it down. Yeah, and the, the lemon's going to give us some acid as well too, so I'm not too worried about it. But okay. I just... Uh, Want to give it a nice little taste and always we'll taste as you go here, right? No going back once it's on the plate in your restaurant. So I like what I taste. All right. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and put it in the plate. You've done this once or twice, huh? Well, I think it's gonna be so gorgeous because when you have great ingredients like this steelhead, all you need to do is pair it with a couple other things, and you just really appreciate the flavor of the fish itself. I love that you get this broth, Curtis. I know. And I thoroughly enjoyed the Viognier that should go with this, even though I can't have <laughs> the fish dish and the sake, so thank you. <laughs> wow. It's a rustic presentation. Yeah, I'm more, like. on the, I'm more on the rustic side of things. I don't right. know if has anyone visited the restaurant, but we're, we don't do a lot of like tweezer plating, as I, I like, like to it. say. Exactly. <laughs> Right, when you're just yeah. <laughs> fussing over every little piece. But I think this makes it so much more approachable and easy to eat and yeah. enjoy. That's a beautiful, beautiful dish. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So happy to be here. Thank you for, oh. for having me. I, I, I'm not putting you on the spot, but we have been having fun having people come up and try what he made as well. So um, yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, you're welcome to come more, up and yeah, try please. some more when we're done here, if you're, if you're the first step here. Does anybody else have questions? Yes. Are there other ways to see the movie if you didn't catch it here at the festival? We're just starting the festival run, so we're we're not atta We haven't figured out what platforms one can see it, but we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> is there a site or is yes, there? Yes, okay. it's heroes dash not underscore okay. heroes dash table dot com. Great, so we yeah. can probably find yeah, out. Yeah, and there. if you like the film or want to see it, you know, just I don't know the social media. Avenues for it that. It starts but, to yeah. kind of take it away. Email her? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, no, our, the email is her. So, yeah. may, I, may, I, may I add my comment now on the wine? Absolutely. I really like it. You like the wine <laughs> with it. All right, <laughs> delightful. You can thank Michelle to the winemaker. So that's so great. Thank you. There's another question over here. Hero or how the food or how did you decide to 
That's a great question. How well, did you decide to make the movie? Again, I think many of you are very sophisticated in terms of food and um, presentation and restaurants and so on. But back in 1989, when I lived in West Hollywood, and he just opened up in a strip mall, um, it was really something to go into this little restaurant next to the dry cleaners and <laughs> get this he would he would he you know had traditional japanese cooking and he did farm to table what was in season and did this combo like chili relleno japanese style wow. you know or whatever and fresh fish with wonderful sauces like Her curtis is doing and so it it just was so astonishing and at, a, at an affordable price wow. and beautifully plated but i love that expression not Tweezer, what did you say? <laughs> Not tweezer so, food. Tw yeah, tweezer food. Yeah. Tweezer. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I and it was comfort food, and there were, and in the, you in the film, you know, there are many daily customers. They came every day for ten years. That's I mean, pe many people ate there several times a week. So, and Hero, yes, was he? There was just something about him, just so warm and loving, and you got it through the food. He was an easy subject to choose, it yeah. sounds like, to make a film. And I, I do think it's so amazing that the two of you got to do this together and bring it to life together it, with let your Gail friendship. Let Gail say something. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're putting Gail on the spot. 120 hours of footage later. 20 hours? <laughs> of how? 120 no. hours. 120 hours, hours of footage. footage. And what did you bring it down to? 55 minutes. Distilled to 55 yeah. minutes. Yeah. That's, wow. that's amazing. And as an editor, that's a challenging job, I imagine. Yes. 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 Your friendship yeah. survived, which I think yeah. is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? No, well, I just have to thank all of the amazing brands that helped bring this weekend to life for us as we start to wrap it up. We have one more today, but thank you, Cuisinart. Thank you, Monogram, for this incredible appliance to cook on. and bake with, and Whole Foods Market, of course, for giving us all these wonderful ingredients. Minor Family Winery has shown up for almost every single tasting, and they're around the whole film festival. So thank you so much for sharing. And Yeah, the wine's delicious with this. And I would just love to invite you to enjoy the rest of the space today. There's Wanderlux, which has created all of these great experiences for us with the sauna and oxygen. And then go grab a beer at Still Artois upstairs or wander through with Hangar One and Glenfiddich. You're not short on food and drink experiences. So, Chef, I want to thank well, you for thank sharing you. your passion with us and everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you have questions that you want to ask up here, please come ask us or come sneak a taste of his salmon, of his steelhead as well. I just literally like give people tasting. Sure.